It was a pretty long winter, but spring fishing is here, and we're off to a great start. We've been catching striped bass on the ocean side and in the back base of Long Island. Mostly schoolies, some very tiny, with some good fish in the mix. This video is all about catching early season stripers on the fly. Let's get started. Hi folks, I'm Sergio Diaz. Today we're fishing in the south side of Long Island. We're actually fishing the ocean side. We have the wind coming out of the north, which gives us a flat ocean, perfect conditions to fly fish. We've been catching schoolies all morning. We're gonna try and catch them on video, show you how we do it. And so let's give it a shot. This spring we had some pretty good days fishing the surf. Mostly small bass, but after a long winter, it feels great to catch these little guys again. The bass were eager to take our flies, and the best part is that you don't have to cast far. Most of the strike took place 20, 30 feet in front of me. So casting clousers into the surf, and we're letting that uh, intermediate line sink. Now the clousers that weighted fly, so it'll go down fairly quickly. And we're pretty shallow here, there's a big sandbar that extends, so we're in about maybe four, five, six feet at most, which is good water to work intermediate line with the clouser. And the bass, they're sitting in the bottom uh, and hitting maybe 20, 30 feet from the actual beach. Come off. When fishing the surf, check your fly often. Surf conditions can cause all kinds of mayhem on your fly and can file the presentation. When conditions are right, you only need to cast a short distance to place your fly in the strike zone. On this day, the outgoing tide seemed to be the key. These small schoolies couldn't resist our flies and kept striking at the wash. Good job, Danny. Nice, buddy. <laughs> That's a really big shot. Okay, this feels like a good fish. All right, folks, we have a fish on the line. Not sure what it is. Feels like a sea robin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
And it's a large seal robin too, holy cow. Look at the size of this sea robin. Holy moly. I'm going to try to hold this fish for you. So you can see how big it is. Wow. Look at the size of this robin. Have you ever seen anything this big? I never have. Not what we're targeting, but holy cow. This is a very large fish. So we're trying this uh, this brand new outfit. It's a uh, it's a level series rod from Rice Fishing. It's, it casts like a beauty, and I paired it with an Orvis uh, with an Orvis Mirage. It's a really good combination. And right now we're gonna we're throwing this uh, small clousers uh, to work the bottom. All right. Today we only use small clousers in size 1, which were very well from sunrise to sunset, where we finished the day with some pretty feisty schoolies. This is a feisty man, Woo. What you're about to see is a reminder that nature can be pretty cruel. This schoolie bass, about the same size of the other fish we've been catching, appears to have been cut almost in half by a large bluefish. Holy shit, wait until you see the bite of this guy, Ray. But the bite didn't kill the fish. All the internal organs were intact and the fish was still alive and kept trying to swim away. trying to catch schoolie bass using a fly rod this morning. We have beautiful conditions. It's a sunny day, calm winds, and the bass are on. So my friend Al over there is trying to catch some right now. So we're gonna join him and see if we can do that too. What do you got there, Al? Okay. You got the first schoolie of the season here. Uh, we're going to be using pretty much the same setup we use all the time. We're using intermediate lines uh, with uh, eight and nine weight fly rods. And no surprise, we're using cluster minnows to get to the bottom. We're going to cast, we're going to let a line sink uh, as we uh, bring the cluster in. All right, so let's give it a shot. Now here's a waiting tip. When fishing deeper water, I like to load my fly rod to cast a line. In other words, I use the resistance of the water to bend the rod at the end of the back cast so that when the forward cast is made, the rod will shoot the fly line with the most power it can provide. Plus, I use a double hole technique, which makes the fly line cast very far, quickly, and with minimal effort.
Now's on another fish. Look at this beautiful fish. Look at this. Wow, we gotta we gotta release him yeah, quickly. That's a nice one. Go one, two, three. There you go. Ha ha! That's a pretty amazing experience. I wasn't expecting to catch a fish that size this early in the season uh, using uh, this, uh, these clouses. But when you're fishing, you never know what you're gonna catch. So uh, we're gonna make sure everything is tight. Uh, line is good. Gotta keep this flight clean. When it hits the bottom, sometimes it'll pick up the mud and it'll stick to the bucktail, uh, which then probably doesn't make it look as natural as a flight can look. So. So now it's clean. Let's uh, let's try. Al's in the background trying to catch another monster fish. <laughs> let's give it a shot. That's a pretty beautiful fish. Here we go. There we go. Oh, it just came off. Nice. All right. Keep him wet. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's some pink stuff on the side, right? Oh, oh. nice release. Sorry, man. <laughs> 